Hello and welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. Welcome back from spring break. We are on week 10 now, and we're going to start looking at animation. So briefly here on the intro, we're going to cover frames, blank frames, and keyframes, a couple of types of tweens, and symbols. There's no homework this week, and um, that means people can catch up on any late work. Uh, I will still give you some points. Some amount of points is better than zero points. You can get up to seven points, seven out of 10, which is a C, but it's better than zero points if you missed any assignments. And on previous assignments that you missed some points, you can still do those, but you have to send me a message on the inbox to tell me that you're resubmitting it because sometimes Canvas does not tell me you've made a resubmission. So if you do a resubmission, if you got very few points and you wanna get more points, you can do it over, but then you need to send me a message on the inbox to tell me that you did it. The resources for this week, we will use these as we do the main lecture. You want to look at these on your own. Some of them are kind of long, but you want to go through these. This is better than the book. There is no required textbook, but there are these official articles from Adobe. You want to read all of these in detail. It's not that there's going to be a test on them, but the material there is very important and it's going to supplement what I'm going to cover in the, in the lecture. And we'll use this together in a bit as well. As I said, there's no homework, so it's kind of a short looking um, week. But then the wrap up is just telling you that here's what we covered. And then next week, we're going to look at frame-by-frame -frame animation. This week, we're going to look at tween animation. And then next week, frame-by-frame -frame, and then other types moving forward. So the second half of the semester is going to be a focus on animation, now that we've gotten more used to using the drawing tools. So in the resources here, animation basics. Again, on your own, you're going to browse each of these articles here. And yeah, it's kind of a long article and such, but it's important because it tells you concepts where that we're going to use together. Motion tweens, classic tweens, IK, which is deprecated, which means it's not as useful as it used to be. So we have the concept of IK or inverse kinematics, but... Adobe says, you can use it, but it's not the best. It's not the most modern. There's other things that are better. There's shape tweens, which I totally think are not useful at all. We might look at them a little bit. And then frame-by-frame -frame animation, which is the best of all, but the most difficult of all. And these are the types of animations. And we'll look at a variety of them in the following weeks. We talk about frame rate over here. We've been using 24 FPS, 24 frames per second in class so far, even though we haven't been animating. Now, the importance of this, 24 frames per second means that in one second of animation, there are 24 frames, there are 24 drawings, there are 24 little changes on the screen. Animation is basically changes happening in time. If you've got a creature jumping on from the floor to a platform, well, the creature is first on the floor and then it's on the platform. But in between, it has to fly through the air, right? Well, it has to crouch down and then jump up and stretch out and then land on the platform and then maybe crouch down a moment too. So in one second of animation, it's 24 frames, 24 drawings of it jumping from the floor to the ledge, 24 frames per second. That's what we're dealing with here. If we had an animation of 30 frames per second, that means 30 drawings in every one second of animation. When you play your AAA titles, you, you wanna play what, at 60 FPS? You want your monitor's refresh rate to be at 144 megahertz, which is not frame rate, but it is cycles per second, right? If you're playing you know, a 60 FPS game, that's 60 little animations, 60 little drawings, 60 little changes in one second in a video game. In animation, 
24 frames is enough for it to be realistic. We don't need 60 frames or 140 frames. We can be at 24 frames. Well, what about 23? Yes, technically it's close enough. What about 22? Okay, it's close enough, but then it starts to get choppier and choppier. The less frames that you have, the stiffer it looks, the more mechanical it looks, the, the less smooth it looks. And basically throughout the decades of animation, trust us, 24 frames per second is the best. More than that, it's too much and it's a lot of work. Less than that, it's too choppy, it's too stiff, it's not realistic enough. Now, there are tricks to work with 24 frames so that it looks very smooth without having to mo do more frames. And there are tricks to do to do less frames, but still look smooth. And we'll cover those things when we get there. So we've been doing 24 all this time and we'll keep doing it. I'm not going to get into this detail, this part into detail too much, identifying animations in the timeline. We haven't really looked at the timeline yet. We'll do it in a moment. So I don't want to really look at this just yet, but this will be very important a little bit later. Jumping down. So we're, we're going to use layers as much as possible. Get into the practice of the floor is a layer. The sky is a layer. The clouds is a layer. Your main character is a layer. That building is a layer. Get used to separating things into layers. And we'll see a really cool trick to separate your drawings into layers very soon. And basically, this is going to help you when you do animation. Any, think about it this way. Anything that you want to animate should be on its own layer. If things are not going to change, if they're not going to animate, okay, you can keep them on one layer if you want. But think about it as anything that is going to change or move or glow or spin or whatever should be on its own layer. And here's the trick here. We'll see it in, in person in a moment. You can do this distribute two layers where animate will automatically move your things to different layers. We'll see how that works in a moment. Mm, okay. So again, read that on your own in detail. Another quick one here, then we'll get, I'll, I'll actually show all of this to you and animate in a moment, but doing the preview readings here. So the second reading about frames. All right. So frames, keyframes, spans, static frames, tween frames. We're going to see all of these little symbols in the timeline. Not only do we deal with layers, which are things stacked on top of each other, you know, layers like Photoshop. But then we're going to deal with frames, which go left and right. And frames are where those little drawings are. Those 24 drawings in sequence all together are an animation. Tell me in the chat, have you ever, have you ever played, maybe when you were a kid, have you ever played with a flip book? You know, a flip book, like a little, a little a notebook of drawings, and then you flip them like that, and then they animate. Or have you drawn one yourself? Maybe in the corner of your textbook, you drew a little bug or whatever, and then when you flip the pages, you get a fun animation. That's a flip book. Anyone ever play with any of those? Well, a flip book is based on the concept of animation. You have one drawing on one page. You have got another drawing on another page. You've got another drawing on another page. And when you flip them all together, 24 frames per second, it gives the illusion of motion. Animation, if you look up the history of it, a version of it was discovered hundreds of years ago, but animation didn't really exist until the invention of movies. And the invention of movies happened around in the 1800s, late 1800s. Photography was invented in the early 1800s. And then movies were invented in the late 1800s or so. And the idea was a lot of little drawings photographed in 24 frames is animation. And it comes to life. Oh, yeah. Flip note app on the DS and such. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the DS and such have their own little drawing thing. So we're going to see a much more powerful version in animate here. But it's still the idea of little drawings played in sequence is an animation. 
we have to deal with different types of frames and there's going to be these different colors and notations about what we're looking at because again animation is complicated if you just have a piece of paper and start to draw okay it's not so complicated but when you're dealing with software which has a lot more power brushes and gradients and layers and all this complicated stuff and sound and lip lip synchronization and frame rate and all of that it's very complex it's complicated but the more time, the more effort you put into it, the more it makes sense and the better you get at it and the better results you get. There's going to be all of these um, actions that we need to do. Right click, do this. Right click, do that. Right click, do that. And a lot of them are going to have keyboard shortcuts that you want to remember as soon as possible. For example, F5 is going to be a very important one. F6 is another important one. And as you start using them, you'll start memorizing them. That's why I want you to read this on your own so that you start to see some of these things and then start to memorize some of these things. Again, this will come with practice. Stuff about labels, don't worry about that yet, but read it. Selecting stuff, we'll come back to that. Distribute, copy, paste, et cetera. Again, on your own, read this in detail. You don't have to do anything, but just read it to start to absorb it as we practice it together. Third reading, one of the tweens that we will do first is a classic tween. Um, this will make more sense as we actually do it. I have a lot of reading. They should put a few graphics in here once in a while. Oh, there's a video here. You should watch that video at some point. I'm making a little pig animate. Come back to this later in a moment. And then also motion tween. In here, there's also a part. What's the difference between a motion tween and a classic tween? There's a little chart here. What does this even mean? It'll make sense once we actually do it. But again, on your own, read these on your own. It's not going to make sense completely. But as we do it and practice it, it'll start to make more sense. To demonstrate these concepts, I'm going to open Adobe Animate. Again, if you want to, you can follow along at home. You can do it as well if you want. Um, you don't have to do it if you don't want. Just follow along, take questions, take notes, etc. Ask questions. At any point, ask questions. Remember, put your name in or um, put the little hand question, um, raise hand if you've got a question. Don't just start talking. It's better to ask the question instead of um, just ask the question or type it in the chat if you want. So I'm going to create a project file as we've been doing over and over and over. Um, new file. I'm going to go with the full HD 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, as we've been doing. Now, here's what I also recommend. Practice with these various sample files at some point. Uh, I'm not really gonna open them up and tell you which ones to do, but on your own, you should be practicing with some of these. Now that you've gotten more used to the software, I would highly recommend that you open, there's 14 of these, and on your own, just practice with them, play with them, because again, the more you practice, the better you get at all of this. You might have to restart your computer because it does sound like it's something's wrong. And again, if it's not working live, that's okay. You don't need to make it work live, but you might have to log out of Zoom, log back in, restart your computer, and maybe it'll work. And if it doesn't, that's okay. So anyway, I'm going to create the full HD, those dimensions, that frame rate, the eight. And the first thing I want to do, what I like to do, I'm going to select on the zoom level, fit to window. So I can see my whole canvas. And then I'm also going to, I'm also going to save it right away. Save as, and I would recommend to create a project folder. Every time you work on a project, make a folder. Make a new folder and put your work in the folder. 
So um, I got my stuff organized in here in my computer. I'm going to create a week 10 folder, for example. And call it whatever, practice1.fla. And I also recommend change your stage color right away to anything besides bright white. That way you can see that when you make your drawings and such, you filled in all the colors properly because if you leave it on white, you might accidentally have holes in your drawings. And let's say your character's walking in front of a tree and suddenly you notice that the eyes you never filled in white and therefore the eyes are transparent and therefore you're seeing through the eyes and you're seeing the tree. If you leave it on white, you have a false sense of security in terms of you forgot to fill in all the colors. I would recommend just change it to that first gray or anything else. And that way you'll know that when you don't have color on a certain place, um, you need to fix it. And one more thing. Um, I would recommend you would also practice, if you haven't done so, over on the help screen, hands-on tutorial. Um, I'm not sure why mine only has six. I think you're supposed to have like 12 or something there. Um, but remember these, where we looked at it on way back on day one, 10 weeks ago, and maybe one other time, I would highly recommend you, you go to these hands-on tutorials because here are more examples of practicing with animation, getting used to the software, the tools and such. And the people that get the best grade are, the, are those that are practicing constantly and learning and asking questions, not just coming to the class and doing the homework, but doing beyond the minimum. And I would highly recommend that people go to the help and go to those hands-on tutorials. For the moment, before we get to that, we need to learn a few things. So down on the bottom of my screen, I've got my timeline panel. Remember, you can open and close panels. You can double click the little tab to close them. You can press F4 on the keyboard to show and hide things to see more at once. You can also drag and drop things. But now we're gonna really focus on this panel. I'm gonna zoom in here. The uh, timeline. We've previously seen that we can create layers. We can create folders for organization. We can delete layers. There's these other advanced things that we'll get to later. We have a little indicator that our frame rate is 24 FPS. We have these numbers from one to infinity. Increments of five, five, 10, 15. And then I also see one second, two second, et cetera. 24 frames per second, all right. Well, on frame 24, that is one second of animation. Some amount of drawings, some amount of changes have taken effect and has resulted in one second of animation. Animation is basically when things change. That flame is flickering because of the fire is twinkling and flickering and sparks are coming off and so forth. And it's glowing. And there's the, you know, the uh, getting bigger, getting smaller. A flame is animated. So 24 drawings in one second of animation of that flame. Or like I said, the little creature jumps from um, the floor to a ledge in one second. So there's 24 drawings there. If I jump over to two seconds, well, that's frame 48. If I jump over to the third second, that is 72. So it's just a little basic math. You know, if something is four, if something is one second long, one times 24 is 24. If something is two seconds long, two times 24 is 48. If something is three seconds long, okay, three times 24. 
then I have to get my calculator after that because then math. But let's say something is seven seconds long. Okay, so seven seconds times 24 frames, that's going to be 168 frames. That's going to be 168 drawings of change. That's a lot of drawing. Think about how long it took you during the midterm to draw the background with no movement and to draw the character with no movement. And here, for seven seconds of animation, I got to draw 168 drawings? Yes and no. Let's say the character's talking. If I'm looking at you right now on the camera, all that I'm really doing is moving my mouth. I'm not even blinking. I'm not moving my head. I'm not doing anything, just moving my mouth. So yeah, I'm talking for seven seconds, but I only have to really animate my mouth. Now, if I'm doing what I usually do and I'm way too articulate and, and all of that and my hands and my head and body, yeah, I got to draw all of that in seven seconds, 168 frames and all of that. Yes, it's a lot of work, a lot of drawings. There are tips, there are tricks, there are shortcuts, of course, such as tweens, which is the first type of animation we'll learn, which is basically we tell animate. I want my drawing to start here. I want my drawing to end here. And I want you animate to animate everything in between. Tweens. I tell it where to start, where to stop and animate. You tween it. You do it in between for me. And we saw that um, there's a couple of tweens that we're going to... Um, that there's a couple of tweens that we're going to look at. The first is classic tween, and then uh, motion tweens and other tweens. But this is how we can create a drawing of a complex character and make it walk across the screen where I'm not going to draw every single movement of it. I'm going to draw it starting in one point, draw it ending in another point, and I'll have animate in between for me, animate for me. So. We see these other icons over here as well. Step backward, step forward. There's something here about inserting. We'll get to that in a moment. And then a bunch of other icons over here that we'll get to in a moment. One of the important ones will be to play. Again, lots of icons. I'll break it down in a moment. Um, what I want to do at this point we're going to start incredibly simple, way too simple. I'm just going to get the brush tool, pick whatever color, whatever size. I'm just going to draw the number one. I have, <clears throat> I have on my timeline a layer called layer one, and I've got a frame. I've got a keyframe on frame one. This is telling me I'm on frame one, the current frame. I'm going to go to frame two, and then there's many ways to do this now. On frame two, I can right click, insert, blank keyframe. I'll show you, I'll show you a couple of ways to do it in a moment. But now I've got two frames in my animation. And now my playhead here, Frame one, frame two. See how that's telling you what frame you're on. Frame two million. Frame one, frame two. Frame one, a keyframe. Frame two, a blank keyframe. Do you see there's a difference? One is a black dot, one is a white dot. Okay, on frame two, I'm going to draw the number two. Ooh, the white dot has become a black dot. Now it's no longer a blank keyframe. It is a keyframe. How did I make a new frame? Let me do that one more time. I'm going to go to frame three, and then I'm going to right click, insert blank keyframe. So now I've got a new keyframe. Frame one, frame two, frame three, blank keyframe. It's white. And I'm going to draw the third number. Got three frames so far. I'm going to get used to um, clicking, either clicking on the frame to jump to the frame or dragging this playhead to move to my different frames. 
or I can tell it here, click on that, take me to frame one, press enter. So there's gonna be many ways to navigate our timeline now. <clears throat> I'm gonna to go to my fourth frame. Here's another way to add frames. The icon over here uh, in between the forward and backward, there's this icon. If you click and hold it, do I want a keyframe, a blank keyframe, a frame, auto keyframe? I want a blank keyframe. And it even shows you the little preview of what type you're about to add. And then again, we, we have to learn the differences in a moment, but another way to add frames, you click on the nothing that is there, and then you can click and hold the insert and select, remember to click and hold it, and then select blank keyframe. Then I'll draw the number four. Unrelated question, even if I struggle with drawing hands, you can still tell it's not AI. <laughs> yeah, AI is notorious for bad hands at the moment, isn't it? Well, it's gonna get smart enough soon enough and then, and then we won't even be able to tell. So on my fourth frame, I've got a fourth drawing. Here's another way to add frames, keyboard shortcuts. I would recommend to start to memorize the keyboard shortcuts. It's going to be way faster than um, it's going to be way faster than the um, than a right click, select. It's going to be way faster than a click and hold the inserter and then click the icon. It's going to be way faster keyboard shortcuts. In the reading, it tells you the shortcuts, but I'll tell you, of course. So let's say on frame five, I want a new keyframe on the keyboard, F7, that's it. So that's gonna be way faster. New frame, F7, new frame, F7, new frame, F7. See how fast I made frame blank keyframes? Faster than right click, faster than click and hold over here. You can do it however you want. In most of these apps, there's like 10 ways to do the same thing. You're gonna see the shortcuts are the best. Because if you're drawing with a mouse, you got your hand on the mouse, your other hand could be on the keyboard. You're going to be using both your hand and the your mouse hand and the keyboard hand, and you'd be doing it faster. If you've got the pen tablet, you know, you're going to be drawing with the pen tablet and your hand is going to be on the keyboard also, hopefully. Well, then you got the power of the keyboard shortcuts as well, as well as your drawing hand. So Frame five, I will add a new blank keyframe, F7, and then draw a five. I've got animation, terrible animation, but I've got animation because I've got five frames. One frame, no animation, of course. Two frames or more, animation. It's changing. Animation is about changing, a flame flickering, a creature jumping, the sun setting, a spaceship flying, animation. There's two ways to see my animation. The quick way, which is not the best, you can just press play right there. You have to press play every time because it's going to play and then go to the end. That's a, just a quick play right there. Better is to get used to using the play button all the way at the top right over here, test movie. This play here will just play at one time, the end. But if you if you instead get used to test movie, it'll show it to you as the complete animation and play it in a loop. And then we see that, of course, it's just numbers flying at you incredibly fast, not even readable. We're getting used to frames, inserting blank keyframes. We're getting used to moving around in the timeline, doing a quick play, doing a test movie, 
getting used to some of these other icons like step backward, step backward, step backward. That has a keyboard shortcut as well. Do you notice these have shortcuts right here? That is telling you if you press the comma, that'll take you back. If you press the period, that'll take you forward. If you press enter, that'll do the quick play. What else? Uh, step forward to next keyframe on active layer. That's alt period or maybe command period on the Mac, whatever the Mac will tell you. Step backward to previous keyframe on the active layer, alt comma. So lots of keyboard shortcuts to remember, but you will do so as you get practice. So on the keyboard, for example, if I press a period, it goes to the future frame. If I press comma, it goes to the previous frame. If I press enter, it does a play, quick play. The uh, test movie up here has a shortcut. It should also tell you in the pop-up, but it doesn't. That has a shortcut. They have it hidden over here under control. Test movie, uh, control, control enter. So control enter is the shortcut for test my movie. You never have to use sh shortcuts if it's too much to memorize, but I would highly recommend you get used to shortcuts because you want to focus more on your, on creating the things than moving your mouse all over the screen and finding the right menu. Once you start to get practice with this, it all comes together. This is animating way too fast. So we're, we'll add another kind of a frame here, a regular frame. If I zoom in here, I'm going to go back to my first frame. I'm going to right click my first frame, my first keyframe and select insert frame that's got a shortcut of f5 now they sound so similar frame keyframe blank keyframe they're very different insert frame looks like that a black circle and then a little black rectangle and what that is doing is it's saying, show this drawing for two frames. Instead of showing the drawing for one frame and then move to the next frame, show it for two frames and then move to the next frame. It's very subtle, but if I play it, the number one is visible slightly longer. It's You can't tell, but it's slightly longer. Let me be more obvious. I'm going to add more key. I'm going to add more frames to the number one. Right click, insert frame. So now the first frame is going to be visible for three. The first drawing is going to be visible for three frames. Okay. If I play it then, okay. The one is, the one looks like it's kind of, it kind of looks like it's something's kind of pausing longer, huh? Okay, let me add a few more. I'm going to add a few more now using the icon of, uh, now it looks longer so we can see it more exactly. So you're getting to, you're getting to the point I was about to say more frames actually slow things down. So previously I had five frames and those five, I had five drawings and those five drawings lasted for one frame, one one twenty fourth of a frame. But the more uh, copies in a way of a drawing that I have, the slower it gets. I'm gonna add some more frames here. Again, right click insert frame is too slow. I could instead memorize F5, add another frame, F5, add another frame. And see what's happening, it's saying, there is an original drawing here, black, black circle. That drawing will be continued to be shown for one, two, three, four, five frames, stop. And then there is a new drawing on frame six. And that frame is shown for one frame. That drawing is shown for one frame. And then next, next, next. And by adding more frames, it's sort of like I'm pausing the drawing. This could be used for slow motion. Exactly. This is how I can slow things down. The more, th the longer something is visible on screen, the, the slower it is. And I'm seeing that right away right here when I press play. Ooh, that one is, is lasting longer. 
it's still fast because it's five twenty-fourths of a second. Again, we're not going to really need to care about math, but if we if we do here, five divided by twenty-four, this is lasting for zero point two seconds. Zero point two seconds. If I had one frame divided by twenty-four, it's lasting for zero point zero four seconds. If I want this number one to be visible for one second, I need to F5, or I need to add enough frames until that lasts one second. I need to show the number one for one second. One second is 24 frames per second. The number one is now slowed down to be displayed for one second until we move to the number two. If I play that, Yep, the number one gets paused for one second, and then the others zoom by. The others are zooming by at 0 0.04 seconds, one divided by 24. This is lasting for 24 frames. 24 divided by 24, one, one second. If I want this to pause for half a second, okay, math. If I want this to pause for half a second, okay, 24 frames per second divided by half a second, 12. Okay. So I want this to last for 12 frames, half a second. 12 frames is right here. Okay. If I can add frames, of course, I can remove frames. Right click, remove frame. I removed one frame. I need to remove 12 more. It's going to take forever to right click, remove. Right click, remove, right click, remove. It's going to take forever. Oops, there's a shortcut. Shift F5. So you have a drawing. You want it to be visible on screen longer. You add frames. You add time, insert frame, F5. You want something to play faster on screen. It needs less frames, maybe remove frames. Shift F5. I need to remove, I put too many frames. Shift F5. So my number one is visible from frame one to frame 12. Number one is gonna be visible for half a second. Then the next numbers. Are the zoom faces on the way? Sorry, let me move those out of the way right there. Let me do it this way, hide video, there we go. So um, what about the chat box? Is the chat box in the way or just the Zoom faces? Chat box is not in the way. All right, so anyway, here we got one second or one half of a second of time. And what's happening is the one is visible for half a second and then the ones, the next one zoom by. Well, here's how you don't literally need to draw 24 frames per second. Oftentimes people make a drawing and they make it visible for two or three frames at a time. So instead of having to draw 24 frames, you only have to draw, uh, you know, 12 frames and make them show twice, one times two, you know, becomes 24. So I'm gonna, I wanna slow down the number two as well. I'll click on, it's no longer frame two, it's frame 13. Even the terminology here, we're on frame 13, but it's the second keyframe. The black dot is a keyframe wherever there is an original drawing. The gray is a frame, which is just a continuation of the previous drawing. And wherever there's the black square, it's the end of the previous keyframe. This keyframe is visible from frame one to 12. I want frame two, I'll F5 two times. So now frame two, keyframe two, is shown for three frames before the next keyframe. I'll make that one be displayed 
also three, let's say, and then that one three, and that one three. I'm slowing it down. More frames is more time or slower. Less frames is less time or faster. Now, if I play it, things are not zooming by like they used to, right? When everything was one frame, it zoomed by because it, it had to show you every frame right away, 24 frames per second. But now I've slowed it down by showing a keyframe, adding regular frames until the next keyframe appears and it slows down. In total, my animation is 24 frames. In total, my animation is taking one second. One frame is visible for 12 frames, half a second. And the other ones, I've got them at three frames, uh, which is technically 24 divided by three is four uh, or eight. So eight, or oh, sorry, three divided by 24, uh, which is one quarter of a second. If you're not good at math, don't worry about it. It'll tell you these things right here in the software itself. I'm on frame nine. This is one second, but it's frame 24. It's obviously not too impressive of an, of an animation yet, but the point is that we're showing changes are happening. <clears throat> Let me pause here. Questions, comments, clarifications, etc. Either on the chat or the microphone. Any questions? All right. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. I'm going to make this time instead of just some. Um, I'm going to make, uh, instead of uh, some numbers, I'm going to draw a little face. So everything that is animated should be on its own layer. This currently layer one, I'm going to just change the name to be, I don't know, I'll call it uh, numbers. I'll make a new layer. I will hide the numbers layer. I will also lock it. I would recommend lock any layers that you're not working with so that you don't accidentally make a change, hide it and lock it. And what happens, what may have happened is, okay, I created a brand new layer. It created automatically for me a blank keyframe and it extended the blank keyframe all the way to the end over here. That may or may not happen. Let me show here. If I was on frame one and I created a new layer, You see how it creates a new layer and it automatically fills all the way to the end of how many frames you already have. That may be useful or not, but what is happening is just that it made an, I made a new layer. I made a blank keyframe. There's nothing there. That's what that represents. There is something here, a drawing. There is something here, a drawing. There is something here. It's a black. It's filled in. There's nothing here on that frame. I'm going to lock these layers the layer numbers and hide it. On frame one, I'm gonna draw a face with some expression. On frame five, I'm going to right click, insert blank keyframe or F7. And I'm gonna draw the face slightly different. Go to frame 10, I'm just gonna go five, 10, 15. Go to frame 10, right click, insert blank keyframe, draw the face again. I would I would really like to be able to see my previous face so that I know where to draw the new face. Of course that is possible. I'll show that in a moment. Frame 15, I'm just gonna guess for the moment. But of course there's a way to preview the previous drawing to then draw a new drawing on top of it, of course, but I won't show you yet. Frame 15, okay, F7, keyboard shortcut, Draw the next face, frame 20, F7. 
uh, next face. I'm not really trying to draw it like it's speaking or anything. I'm just drawing faces. And then frame 24, F7, the final face. If I press play right here, I really drew them all in the wrong place. That's okay. We'll see how we can sort of draw on top of, like if you use Snapchat or Instagram, you know, how you can make an animation and then have a ghost image to do the next part of the animation. You can do that in animate, of course. I'll show you how in a moment. But when I press play here, okay, these faces are animating. They're not animating well. It doesn't really look like it's talking, but I'm just showing that the faces change. Cool. If I press play up here, whoops, I'm seeing the numbers as well, as well as the drawing of the faces. I didn't didn't want that. Well, that's just because even though the layer is locked and the layer is hidden, that doesn't matter when you actually animate it for real, unless you turn it into a guide. Remember this, when you were tracing, if you right click your uh, layer and turn it to a guide, remember when you could, when you, remember when you went to properties and selected guide, if you really want to hide a layer so that it doesn't animate, turn it into a guide. And so each one of these phases of the face are taking about five frames. Technically, the first one only takes four, and then the last one only takes one. But the different faces, there's, um, there's six keyframes, but there are 12 frames in total. So we need to get used to this terminology. The black dots are keyframes. And if I say, I'm going to go to my third keyframe. Okay, first keyframe, second keyframe, third keyframe. But if I say, I'm going to go to my third frame. Okay, first frame, second frame, third frame. See the difference. Frames are everything, but keyframes are the black dots. So by going to my fourth keyframe, one, two, three, four is right here, but it's frame, regular frame 15. Confusing, yes, but as you practice it, it'll be second nature soon enough. And so we got some little faces right here. I want them to speed up. Now I think they're too, now I think they're too slow. So instead of each one taking five frames, maybe I want them to take two frames. All right, so. This is where I'm going to remove frames. I added too many frames. I can do the right click or memorize Shift F5. Okay, so that's taking two frames. Shift F5, two frames, two frames. That one needs one more frame. So instead of each one taking five frames to display, they only take two frames. Less frames, faster animation. More frames, slower animation. It's kind of backwards or opposite. So now if I play it, okay, it's faster. So again, it's not actually animating like it's really talking. I don't like that it's bouncing all over the place. If only there was a way to see the ghost image before me. Of course there is. I'll show you soon enough. But we're getting to the point here that the idea is that animation means a sequence of changes of a drawing. And those changes could be simply the lips moving. The changes could be the whole character moving across the mountain. The changes could be a world spinning around a sun. The changes could be flames flickering on a staff. It could be a jewel glinting in a treasure box. Animation is drawings 
that change over time. And the more of the same drawing, the slower it is. And like this. And then the less of the drawing, of the same drawing, the faster it is. And so the, the project here so far is, of course, incredibly simple, but we're just seeing that we're getting used to layers and frames and moving between the frames, doing a quick play or doing a test movie, getting used to all of that, starting to memorize some of these shortcuts. And remember, put everything on its own layer that needs to animate. I'm not saying put all six of your trees on six different layers. No, put all the trees on one background layer. Um, and then put your character on its own layer and put the clouds in another layer. But as you get more complex, think about on the midterm when you created the background of the um, the background for the character. The uh, the lay the the way you drew it might be separatable into layers because maybe things are moving in front of or behind things of the of the uh, of the animation. That comes with practice. So um, let's take our first break, and uh, then we'll start to look at, okay, this seems complex. Can't I let the AI computer do it for me? Yes, we'll start to look at tweens, where the computer will do the drawings in between for you. Instead of every single drawing yourself, let the computer do some of the hard work. But we'll take a break here. So. We'll take a break here. So it's 106. We'll take a 10 minute break until 116. And then we'll be we'll be back. We'll be back in a moment at 116.
All right, everyone, we're back. If anyone missed any class time, the recording will come in handy. All right, so at this point, we've been doing um, just an introduction to um, frames and the like. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to lock this layer, hide this layer, turn this layer into a guide, and then make a new layer. Remember, turning it into a guide is what will deactivate the layer completely. So in this new layer, I'm going to um, call this one shape, uh, shape uh, underscore T, shape tween. Just giving it some name doesn't matter, but I'm giving it a unique name. What I'm going to do here is we'll look at shape tweens. So here's where, not sorry, not shape tweens, classic tweens. We're going to look at classic tweens, motion tweens, and then other kinds. But a classic tween, this is where basically you tell um, animate, here's my character starting point, here's my character ending point, and then you animate uh, tween it, do all the things in between to get it from there to there. Now, this is more complex because it requires a little bit more effort, but this effort here will be very useful in the future. So in this, I created a brand new layer and it automatically filled in um, the one second of time because I previously had those 24 frames. Um, this is where it might be a little bit uh, annoying that it did this for me. Um, it gave me too many frames to start to work with. Here's when I do want to remove frames. And here's where we get, again, way more complex, way faster. Uh, I'm going to get my, my select tool. And I'm going to select, you know, starting from the end here, frame 25 or 24, I'm going to select a bunch of frames at once going to frame two. I don't want all of these extra frames that it created for me. And the default is that when you make new layers, it will automatically fill in blank frames until it gets to your final frame, which may be useful sometimes, but as a beginner, it might not be too useful. So I'm gonna to need to remove all of these extra frames it did for me. And instead of right click, remove, right click, remove 23 times or on the keyboard, Shift F5 23 times, you can select a bunch of frames at once and then do the right click remove frames. Shift F5. And then you see now it has removed all of those frames until the first blank keyframe. These are going to be subtle things that don't make a lot of sense in the beginning. And even subtle things like this, this is annoying. If I were to click one time on a frame, like frame 11, and then I sort of click and drag because I wanted to make a selection, but I wasn't paying attention. And if I let it go, huh, it created a brand new keyframe somehow. Well, this is the annoying thing. Animate is very specific. Are you clicking something and then dragging it? Or are you clicking and holding and then dragging. So there's all of these subtle details about how does the app work that you have to now be aware of. Because if I click one time, I've technically selected it. And then if I click and drag it, I'm dragging that one frame and then it automatically fills in frames for me and all this interesting stuff. If instead I wanted to make a multiple selection, don't click and let it go, hold it. So if I were to click and hold and drag, I've made a selection of a bunch of layers. If I click and let it go, and then I try to drag, whoops, now I'm moving the frame and things are happening and it's not what I wanted. So it's very subtle. What I'm trying to do here, the point is, I'm trying to select, click and hold and select, and then letting it go on frame two so that then I can shift F5 and they all go away. So again, this stuff is complicated. There's a lot of new things that we're going to be learning because it's not just about the drawings and the layers. Now it's the frames. 
and even the selection of things is very subtle. So I got the whole point of this is I just want to have frame one on my new layer. And I want to draw very simple, a little character or whatever. I'm going to draw a little robot. So something here, robot. And I want this to to animate. I want it to move across the screen. Now, spoiler alert. This is not going to be that it automatically knows to animate it and the arms swing around and the head bobs around and all of that. No, computers are not smart enough for that yet, even though the AI is getting better and better. This is not going to be a magic thing that you draw and make it make an amazing drawing and it'll automatically know to make the tail wag and the fur flop around and the ears move and everything. No, it's not that smart, but it will definitely help us with a variety of the tasks we need to do when we, uh, when we animate. So I got something that I want to animate with my selection tool. If I select it, you know, I I've got my, I've got my drawing. Well, I want it to animate from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, like it's moving across. So if you drew the character somewhere, if you drew the character somewhere, you know, you want to select it, move it somewhere to the left. I'm going to select the character that I drew and I'm going to right click. The character, if you right click on an empty spot, okay, that's not selecting the character because it's not filled in. Um, make sure you're right clicking what you drew. See how the, there the icon is very subtle and but different. Here, nothing is selecting. Right here, something is selecting. So I've selected, I've drawn a character, I've selected it. I'm going to right click the character. We have some new options classic tween, motion tween, shape tween, motion path, etc. I'm going to start with create classic tween. Pop up. Convert selection to symbol for tween. The selected frame spans cannot be tweened. You must convert frame to a symbol in order to tween. Do you want animate to convert and create a tween? Yes. Okay. What it's telling me is if you want to use this type of animation, your drawings have to be symbols. We're going to learn symbols today, and we're going to keep using symbols over and over and over. I'll explain the symbol in more detail in a moment, but all that I want to do here is just say, okay. And what happened here now is um, this drawing that was an independent drawing a moment ago um, is, is now, if I click on it, it the uh, properties over here say this object is a graphic. It's a symbol. It's no longer um, just an individual drawing like like this. When I when I just drew that, it said that's a shape or whatever simple thing. But this that I drew it, and then I right click convert to classic tween. It converted it to a to a symbol, and I can see that in this panel that we're gonna use a lot in the future, not really today, but the library. The library shows I've got an object there, tween one. Hey, that's the drawing I made. And again, I don't wanna get sidetracked, but the point of this that we'll see later, don't get sidetracked, but the point of this is now I can drag copies of that one drawing out of my library um, to do really advanced things later. Again, I don't want to get too sidetracked. I know that's amazing, but don't do that yet. Um, but I can I can make a castle, turn it into a symbol, and then make bunches of copies of those easily. I can make a torch flickering, save it as a symbol, and then put 10 copies of those torches on screen. And I got 10 flickering torches. Again, we're not there yet, but we're going to get to that eventually. So just look at that, and that's interesting, but not doing anything with it yet. The whole point of this is this is now a symbol, which I can now tween, and look how my timeline has changed. 
I have here my starting frame, dot, dot, dot. Where does my frame, where does my animation end? It doesn't know yet. I haven't told it. Starting point, ending point. And sorry about the noise outside. That's the uh, trash coming by. But animate wants to tween it for me, but it doesn't know where to stop, where to end. It knows where to start, but it doesn't know where to end. So I'm going to go to the final frame here, frame 24. Right click, insert um, keyframe. Now here's something slightly different. We were doing right click, insert blank keyframe. We were doing right click, insert frame. This time I'm doing insert keyframe. And what that does is it creates a new frame and a copy of the previous frame that I drew, the last frame that I drew. And so now it's saying, okay, let us animate for you from here to here. Notice how it's no longer a broken dotted line because it doesn't know what to animate. Let me undo that for a moment. It didn't know what to do until I did the right click insert frame or there's another shortcut F6. So it's all up on the keyboard there, F5, F6, F7. I need a keyframe here, so that's F6 actually. Hold on, I need to do something here. All right, so um, on frame 24, I'm doing F6 or right click, insert keyframe. It should be called copy keyframe. I wish it was called copy keyframe because that's what it's actually doing. It's taking your previous keyframe, whatever the drawing was, and copying it to a new frame. And now I will move the character to the right. Guess what's gonna happen? I told it on frame one, my character is here on the left. On the final frame, my character's on the right, and in between, it moves. Now again, it's not moving its arms around and actually walking like real walking and the legs aren't moving because it's not smart enough to do that. <clears throat> but it's moving. I told it where to stop, or I told it where it starts. I told it where it ends. Well, I want it to not just go straight ahead. I want it to jump. Okay, so here's where then your imagination starts to get wilder and wilder. I want it to jump. So, okay, I want a new layer because I want to put, I want to draw a hill. And here's the part where, okay, it automatically filled all the frames for me. That's nice. And on, the, on that layer, I'm going to draw a hill. You know, there's the ground, there's a hill, and then there's the ground. If it, if it, if I just press play, it's going to go through the hill because it's not smart enough to know that it needs to jump over. I want it, of course, to go this way, then jump up here, and then go over. Well, when I made my tween a moment ago, it only had start here and end here. I have to tell it, actually, start here, then when you get here, start to move up, and then when you get here, be at the top, and then when you get here, come down, and then when you get here, land, and then finish at the end. So I'm going to do on the tween that it did it wrong for me. I'm going to right click, remove the tween so that it can recalculate the path, basically. So there's no animation yet. It starts here. It ends here. And so I want, let's say on frame five, F6, insert keyframe, so that I can move the character closer to the hill. 
And then maybe five more frames, I'm just randomly picking a number. There is a little bit more of an art or a science to what frame number to select, but just to keep it simple, I'm going five, 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 five. So frame 10, right click, insert keyframe, F6. Gonna then make it move up here somewhere. Then frame 15, F6 making it that it landed down here. And then it knows that I'm going to end over there or not, it doesn't know, but I left my frame there previously. So now it's going to go from here to here, to here, to here, to here. Obviously it's way too choppy. I wanted to animate it for me. So in between this keyframe and this keyframe, right click, Insert a tween, classic tween for the moment. So it'll automatically make the number of drawings necessary for me to smoothly move it from here to here. Then I wanted to animate it from here to here. I don't want it to be here, then suddenly appear there. So in between there, right click, classic tween. So now it's drawing for me from here to here to here to here. Next, I don't want it to just be at the very top and then suddenly be at the bottom. I want it to right click, insert classic tween. So it's going to animate for me from here to here. And the final part of the animation, right click, classic tween. So now what's happening here is the, the movement of this. Look at that. Instead of just going straight ahead, I've given it a way to go. Start here and here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and have it for me do the smooth animation. So question here, you would want a few more frames in between. Maybe it depends on what you want. Do you want the movement of this to be faster or slower? Remember, more frames will slow down the animation. Less frames will speed up the animation. One technique that is hard to teach, because you know I can teach you the, the buttons and the right clicks and all of that. One thing that is harder to teach about animation is the theory of animation. The actual literal aspects of animation are not that hard to teach. The theory of animation is harder to teach. By that, I mean, well, how many frames do I know to use? Is six frames enough or do I need 12 frames? Do I need three frames? Do I need four frames? That's harder to teach. Now, animation is 100 years old. So there, there are these theories um, like Disney has the Disney style of animation, which is based on their 12 principles. You can actually look up the 12 principles of animation and you can learn Disney style animation, which is one of the best, of course. And that explains exactly how many drawings, how many frames and all of this stuff to have really smooth animation. So long answer to your short question. I don't know. It depends on what you want it to do. Do I want it to be a slow climb up the hill because it's a hard climb and then a fast slide down because it's easy. Well, if I wanted a slower climb up, I need more frames. Slower animation, more frames. Faster animation, less frames. I very mechanically put only five frames at a time. Five from here to there, five from here to there, five from here to there. And maybe I wanted a very mechanical animation because it's a robot. But what if it was a, you know, a puppy? It's going to have a hard time climbing up the hill, lots of frames climbing up, and then it's just going to slide down at the bottom because it lost its footing. So less frames. That, the theory of animation, that's the part that's harder to teach. And you have to practice it over and over. But let's say, yeah, I want it to take longer to climb the hill and less time to come down. So I need more frames during the part of going up. So the part of going up is right here. Between frame five and 10 should be slower. So more frames. Anywhere in between this keyframe and that keyframe, I need more regular frames. Right click, insert frame or F5. 
one, two, three. Why three? I'll explain why in a moment. But now that's taking slightly longer, more frames, more time, slower. Let me add three more. One, two, three. I added six more frames in total. I used to have five, and I, I added six more to those five. Six plus five is 11. It's taking 11 frames now. That's almost 12 frames. That's so much half a second. 24 frames per second. 12 frames is half a second. So now it's taking almost half a second to climb up the hill, where it will only take five frames to go down the hill. And now, if I play it, it's going slightly slower up the hill. To make the character move faster, would you need less? Exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll do both of those right now. I want it even slower to go up the hill. I chose three frames because, yes, you're going to have to think of a little bit of math, but 24 frames, that's the, the number to memorize. If you want something to take one second, that's 24 frames. If you want it to take half a second, that's 12 frames. If you want it to take half of a half of a second or a quarter, that's six frames. I want this to take half a second longer to go up. Half a second is 12. So I know I just have to add 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've spent, I've made it go half a second more slower just on the uphill portion of the tween. And when I animate it, well, the hill disappears. I'll explain why in a moment. But look how much slower it's going up the hill and look at how much faster comparatively it feels like it went down the hill. I want it to go down the hill even faster. The down animation is happening between frames. Now it's 28 to... 33, but I see that it starts here, it ends here, it takes about five frames. I want it even faster. Here's where I can right click, remove frame, or shift F5. F5 adds frames, adds time. Shift F5 removes frames, speeds up time. So I'll take away, let's say, three. One, two, three. Slow, fast. Slow, fast. Way too fast, maybe. And the hill is disappearing because that's exactly what the timeline shows. My layer of the shape, which I'll call, I guess, robot, is taking in total, in my case, 39 frames to animate. My hill is only visible for 24 frames. Well, on frame 25, there's no hill anymore, so it goes away. And on the subsequent frames, there's no more hill, so it's not visible, so the robot is floating. Well, I, of course I want this hill to be visible all the way till the end of my animation. I need to add more frames. I need to make this hill drawing be visible more time. It is only currently visible for one second. Then it is invisible or doesn't exist until the end there, so I need more time. On that frame, F5, add more frames. F5, 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 some amount of times until they line up. So now the, so now the hill is visible from frame 1 to 39, just like my robot animation is visible. It exists from frame 1 to 39. Now the hill won't disappear. So we have a little bit of a certain speed of movement from left until the hill, and then a slow movement up because it's a hard climb, and then a very, very fast, almost fall speed, and then it goes to the end. And then the animation loops because when we get to the final frame automatically, which we can change, of course, we'll learn how later, but automatically, when the animation ends, it's going to start over back on frame one and loop. If I want to sort of make it pause at the end, triumphantly, it got over the hill, and I want it to pause there before looping, 
I need to have more time on the final frame. The final frame happens and then it automatically loops back to the beginning. No, I wanted to pause for three seconds. Okay, calculator time. 24 frames times three. I need to add 72 frames so that that represents a pause of three seconds. Because one frame is not going to be long enough. Three frames is not long enough. I want it to pause. I want it to get to the end of the hill there. Pause there for three seconds. And it's just math. 24 frames per second. 24 times three. I need 72 frames. I'm going to press 70. I'm going to press... Uh, I'm going to press F2. I'm going to press F5 72 times. No, you're going to do it the smart way. You're going to go to frame 72. I'll round it up to 75. I'm going to go to frame 75, and I'm going to press F5. And it's going to fill it in from your last frame to your current frame, three seconds. The hill disappears, so of course, also on the hill layer, clicking on frame 75. Press F5 on the keyboard, which is the same as right-click insert frame, which is the same as click and hold the icon there, frame. And then now, it moves over, pause for three seconds before it loops. Let me undo that to show one more time. Wherever you click the mouse, and then press F5, it'll automatically add the time, it'll add the pause up to that point. I have to do a little bit of math to know how much, how many frames I need. I rounded it up to 75, but technically 72 is three seconds. Um, without doing any of the math, I'll put it on frame 100. Frame 100, F5, Show the robot until frame 100. That adds up to how much time? A little bit more than four seconds. Show the hill all the way up to frame 100, F5. A little bit more than four seconds. Maybe now it's pausing too long, and then it loops over. Well, what about now if I want it to animate coming back? Well, uh, we'll do that in a moment, I guess. But you see... We've spent a lot of time with the drawing tools. And now we're opening a whole new can of worms. Drawings plus frames equals animation. And here, I'm having the computer do the animation for me with tweens. I have to tell it, where does my animation start? Where does it end? Right click, insert classic tween. Where from there is my next movement, here to there. Right click, insert classic tween, and on and on. Now this is not smart enough to then make the legs actually move and the uh, ha hands flail around and all that stuff and the legs and everything. There is a way to get it to do that eventually, but we're taking baby steps at the moment. And I might not need something that because we have the animation of the object in motion and we have the animation of the object stationary we might not need an object for the legs to be moving maybe it is you know a ghost and it doesn't have legs uh so it could uh it could be you know easily hovering and I don't want to get too far into it yet, but maybe as you explore, what if it was a ghost? Well, if I go to my library, and the very first time when I did the right-click tween, it said, we must convert this into a symbol first. Well, now that it's a symbol in your library panel, you can double-click it in the library and make changes to it, such as deleting it and deleting it such as removing it completely and redrawing it as a ghost. Angry ghost. And um, this is too advanced to talk about at the moment, but then if I go back now, 
the thing that was a that was a robot a moment ago, it's a ghost. The whole animation is there perfectly as before. But now that we started to get a super fast preview of symbols, a very powerful feature, I can change an aspect of my drawing of my animation. This might have been a 10 minute long animation. And then I decided, actually, I want it to be a ghost, not a robot. I made one quick change, too quick. Again, I'll show this uh, slower in detail later. I don't want to get too far off. But I made one little change, and it, and it automatically applied on the whole animation. That's something to play with that I'll show in detail in the lectures. But maybe as you experiment on your own and... Um, and such true the recording and the lecture maybe you'll experiment on your own now it's too slow so i'm going to remove some frames i'm going to select a bunch of frames at once right click in uh, right click remove frames This is something to play with. Um, it's a little bit sooner than I wanted, but we got to take one more break. Um, at this point, maybe you can do a little practice if you want. But let's do one more break. It's just it's just about 150. Let's take a break until two. I'll show you some more, of course. You might have questions. You might want to practice. But let's take one more break. We'll be back at two.
All right, we're back. So the quick question there about the midterm survey. Uh, back on week eight, uh, there was a little extra credit survey there. If people answer that, you can still do so. You get some extra credit. All right, so on the final hour or less here, um, we, we have a few more, a little bit more animation to kind of learn about here. So this is classic tween. The other one we'll look at today also is motion tween. Now, again, as I said in the resources of this week, um, you do want to go through these yourself here now that you're getting some of this knowledge. And in the about motion tween, there is a chart that shows you what's the difference between motion and classic. So again, not all of these will make sense at the moment, but um, I'll show you the second kind of tween for the moment. It's very similar to this one um, with a couple differences here and there. So let's do that, but actually just one more thing. Be right back. All right, so uh, shape or motion tween. Uh, I'm gonna organize my layers here a little bit. So I had this robot and I had this hill um, because I've got an extremely simple drawing, it doesn't matter, but you should see that when this was moving, there was parts of it that looks like that, that it's transparent um, because there's a couple of things. Yes, it is transparent. I didn't finish drawing it, but well, technically the hill is in front of the ghost or the character because these layers, it's from top to bottom. And the thing that's on the top is the thing that goes in front of the thing that's on the bottom. So I have these backwards, technically, the hill should be behind the character. And again, because this is not filled in, it doesn't really matter. But if this were filled in with a color, well, then what what's happening is that uh, it looks like it's going behind the hill, I suppose. And I want the ghost, of course, to be in front. So that's just to remind you that the layers, the orders of the layers matter. And now, well, now I'm seeing that because I didn't fill in the, the character with full colors, it looks transparent. And again, as you experiment with this on your own and you start to see what these um, symbols are, and I'll have a fuller lecture on symbols later, or, or you can also on your own read ahead with the, you can go ahead with the readings if you wish or wait as we talk about it in the lectures. But now, we've got these layers here. And I want to show comparatively the um, motion tween. So I'm gonna lock and hide and turn into, into guides these other layers, because even if I hide them, remember, just, just because you hide them doesn't mean that they will be deactivated when you actually test your movie. When you run the movie, you still have to do the right-click guide, right-click guide. Then there's nothing. Okay, so this time what I'm going to do on a new layer, I'm going to draw a little spaceship, a little spaceship flying across the um, the stars. So let's see. Just a little kind of like a classic UFO shape. Like that. And I made a new layer. It automatically made the very first frame and then it filled in 
it made the very first keyframe and then it filled in frames all the way to whatever final frame I had. In my case, it was 72 or 71. So it automatically filled them all in. I may or may not want that, but just be aware of that. And similar, when I drew something, I can then right click and instead of classic tween, I'll go with motion tween. It'll once again say, this needs to be a symbol before we can tween it for you. So using any of these tweens, any of these in-between techniques requires that your drawing is a symbol and it'll do it for you when you try to right click, use a tween. Now, if you don't want it to remind you every time on your own before you do that right click tween, you could right click um, convert to symbol which gives you more options, but we'll get to that later. This needs to be a symbol, so it will do it for you when you do right-click mo motion tween, and it'll say, yes, turn it into a symbol for me. So in my library panel, I've got two symbols. Symbol one, tween one, but they're there in the library, <clears throat> and again, this is more complex than we want to do at the moment, but here's how I can I here's how I can make a a, a squadron of um I can make a squadron of uh I can make a squadron by getting a bunch of copies out of the library. I'll we'll do that later. All right, so this is a different color and this looks a little bit different and this will be very similar about here's my starting point here's my ending point and now computer you tween it for me it'll be slightly different though i don't have to specify a keyframe or blank keyframe technically but i still have to specify where do i want my my animation to happen so what I mean by that is I'm going to make this kind of like fly around, like zigzag around the screen a little bit. It's a little large also, so I'll resize it just a little bit. Remember, you can hold down shift so that it doesn't distort if you hold shift on the keyboard. And so we'll say I want it to start at the beginning here and get at the end here, but I kind of also want it to zig around and such. So the way I would do this is on frame one, my starting point. Then I would go to just to just to pick some frames. I would go to frame five and then move it next door I want it. I don't need to specify keyframe. It automatically understands that I want to go from here to there. I'll go to some other frame. 10. I'll move it over here. It automatically kind of knows to kind of put a keyframe. Technically, it's not a keyframe. It's a little diamond. It's part of the path of the motion tween. It's not really a keyframe. And I've moved it there. Five more frames or so. This time I'll make it zag up over here. Five more frames. Make it move down here, maybe. And you get the idea. I'm just going to kind of move it around here and there. I'm not doing the right click. I'm not adding any keyframes. I'm just moving it where I want it to be. And it will automatically do it for me. It does matter. Five frames versus six versus two versus 12. Because again, more frames in between keyframes is slower. More frames is slower. Less frames is faster. I'm mechanically making it go five, 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 five. It would be better. And this is the part about, this is harder to teach. It would be better that, okay, it's on frame eight, then it's on frame 17, then it's on frame whatever. It, it, that comes with practice. And that comes with testing your work that comes with trying it this way and then changing your mind and changing it to that. 
just to show you results, I'm just mechanically going five frames at a time and it will look very stiff. It'll look very mechanical. It'll look robotic. But I'm seeing this path. In my case, it's a red line. If you can't really see your path, when you uh, right-click properties of your layer, you can pick what's the color of my path. So if it's hard to see, like a like a green or a yellow, you can right-click properties. We've seen this screen before, but now we can see that the outline color here, maybe you can set it to something visible. That will not be visible when you play it, when you test it, but it's just your path of where it's moving around. And there it is zipping around throughout the sky. Maybe too fast, maybe too many movements, maybe not fast enough. Um, the various frames that I've made here, I can kind of drag them around. They're not really frames. I forget what the exact name of this because they're these little diamonds. Um, but here then, I wanted to go from here to here very fast or very slow. If I click and drag it like this, or slower, the more frames there are in between a change, the slower. The least, the less frames there are in between, the faster, because it has to get across the screen in a certain amount of time. So that's a very fast movement there compared to instead clicking it, dragging it here. Now it's a slower movement, but then now that bumps into the next one, that's gotta be a fast movement there. To go from here to here, it must be a very fast movement. See that, see how fast it went from the left side to the right side right there? Cause it has to move from this pseudo frame to that pseudo frame. If you do these right clicks, you have these options we'll look at later, but I can do remove motion tween. And all of the changes that I made there go away. They, they were not actually frames. They were points of the movement. And if I do it again, right click motion tween. Okay. So just to do it again, but kind of quickly. Much simpler zigzag. What's cool about this type of animation is you, you're you seeing where it's going to go, but you can also manipulate that with the selection tool. Instead of a perfectly straight path, I'm going to make it a bit of a curve. It's going to loop, it's going to swing around. And something like that. So with this type of animation, you can put in some of this more interesting reality instead of it being a mechanical movement from here to here to here. Now again, I deliberately drew something very simple, but what if it was a rocket ship with fire <clears throat> with fire emanating from the thrusters and obviously as it's moving around in the direction it should point to a certain direction i generically made a ufo with no direction but if i you know if i go to my symbol in the library and make a change to it what if i what if i make you know a rocket ship type of type of shape like that. Okay, so instead of instead of the um, instead of the amorphous UFO that doesn't have a direction, what if I did draw a, a UFO or a rocket that has a direction? Well, the problem here, it's not following the path. Shouldn't it be pointing in the direction that it's flying? Yes, of course, but this is the part where animation is complicated. I know exactly what I want, and I know how to draw it and such, 
But the animation part, that's the complex part. That's the part that takes way more setup and knowledge and understanding. And that's why we're going to spend like the next three or four weeks on animation stuff or more because even doing a little thing like this, well, I just wanted to point into the right direction. It might not be as easy as you think, even though that seems like an easy thing because computers are dumb. Yeah, they're getting smarter and smarter and chat GPT and all that amazing stuff. But you're when you do complex things, you know, to regular people, chat GPT is amazing. And wow, it computer generated that amazing picture. But you quickly run into the limitations. Like we mentioned earlier, it can't even make hands properly. Well, here's a limitation of this AI stuff. It doesn't know to point the direction of your ship in the right way because it doesn't see that as a ship. It just sees it as lines. We can, of course, help it along by maybe rotating it in the right direction, right, with your transform tool. You still have to then go to the various points of change and then kind of point it in the direction you need it to be. But even that might not be exactly how you think. Look at that. It looks like it's uh, like it's doing a Tokyo drift right there. <laughs> so you you have to put more motion. You have to you have to give it more hints in a way. You can sort of think of these as hints. Because if we start here and then end here. Well, it's kind of smart enough to kind of put it the way you want. But then from here, it's not smart enough at all. Well, from here is now when you need a change. So rotation, it put in a hint. Now from here to here, well, the rotation's got to be that way. It put another hint. So from here to here. Now, see, now it doesn't know. It's going the, it's doing a full rotation the wrong way. Obviously, I just wanted to rotate to the right, but it was dumb and it rotated it to the left. And I get like this weird loop like that. Computers are dumb. But um, I'm not going to get too complicated at the moment about making this perfect. This is just to start to show you a different type of animation where we have a shape tween a motion tween. There's also the, um, sorry, I keep saying it that way, a classic tween, and then a motion tween. The One of the worst ones is the shape tween, even though I keep saying it, you can play with that one on your own. But from the resources that you should read, now that we started to look at some of this stuff, um, you need to read these and practice some of this. There's no homework this week, but there's plenty to start to play with if you just wrap up for today's lecture and then go out on your way and then come back next week and didn't practice, you're wasting your time. Practice this stuff, make layers, make mistakes, try this, try that, ask me or the assistants help. Remember, you can contact the assistants as well via the inbox. Don't just wait to come in person. You can contact myself or the assistants anytime throughout the week via the inbox. As I said, remember to go back to these help tutorials, practice these. Some of them are too advanced for us at the moment, but try them. Remember when you create a new project, there are all of these, all of these sample files. Hey, there's a little, there's Mr. McBoney Bones. What's that about? And what about this parachuting pig? If you haven't played with any of these, you're missing out as well. These are a version of the, uh, of these help file, help tutorials as well. When we did day one of the class, 10 weeks ago, uh, you you had tried a couple of these that might have been very interesting. Go back to them. Not just wait for the lecture to happen. You should also be working on your own, trying things on your own. Because there's no homework this week, you should really practice this stuff or do any of the late work. Because it's a holiday as well. That's why we have no homework. But because it's also a holiday, technically it's a holiday. You don't need to be here. But those of you that are here, I really appreciate it. 
Um, yes, as I said earlier, you can leave whenever you wish. So good luck on your interview. See you next time. But anyway, I was going to start to wind down anyway. Um, right now, it'd be Professor, best... Professor, I need to go to the interview. And then uh, <laughs> when I finish, I... Yes, perfectly fine, as I had said. So um, the um, the for the lecture at the moment... Um, there's a lot that uh, we covered here and there's plenty more and a lot of holes in our knowledge still. And because of also the holiday, we're going to wrap up in just a moment. So we're not going to be here the full until three. However, I will still stay here. Maybe the assistants might stay as well. Uh, not necessary, but because it's a holiday. And if people want to practice some of this, have further questions, we'll ask them. There's still more we're going to talk about, of course, in the lecture. There's still probably a lot of ideas you're getting in your head about, oh, I learned this, but now how do I make it do that? I'm pretty sure we're going to cover it. So um, it'd be best to practice what we've learned so far, and it'd be best to go into the various resources here and read them on your own. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to end the, the, le the official lecture in a moment. We're going to have some lab time if you want to stay here and work or not, because it's technically the holiday. Again, there's no homework this week, but do any late work. Definitely still turn it in. Send me a message on the inbox that you turned it in, because sometimes Canvas doesn't alert me if you've turned in late work. And um, hopefully this is kind of exciting. We're starting to look at our very, very, very first looks at animation. There's plenty more to learn. But hopefully this is interesting so far. So we'll end the lecture at this point. Stay if you wish, and we'll do some lab time.